Welcome back to Max Unboxing, and I'm joined, of course, by one of the greatest fighters who ever lived, the great George Foreman. Welcome to the show. Thanks Thank for coming. Thank you. Happy to be with you. So I, I will, you know, like I love working with Roy Jones, and that was one of the great things about working at HBO and Andrew, Andre Ward, who I'm now working with here. But I was always sad that I missed the George Foreman era at HBO. I had a lot of fun for 13 years. It turned out to be a job, so I said, I, I didn't want a job. <laughs> That's why I went into boxing, so I wouldn't need a job. But you and Larry Merchant put on quite a show back then. Larry was some guy to work with. You know, he's a real creative guy, and he had his heroes in writing. I had my heroes in boxing. So Fighting. He was always, we were always entangled into what's, what we really wanted to project, but I loved working with Larry. Do you think the way the business has changed, right? It used to be... HBO was the place where all the big fights happened, and to a lesser degree, Showtime. And now we have a million different places offering high-level content, but there's no real, like, one place. This is where... How do you see the change in the boxing industry, and, and you know, as it relates to HBO going away? Yeah, it... Change is necessary, though. It, you got to change. You just can't stay the same. I left boxing, and remember, it was Howard Cosell calling all of my fights on H, uh, ABC. And when I got back, I said, what has happened to boxing? Here are these uh, HBO and Showtime. Who are these people? Next thing you know, HBO just took over. Took over. So now it's fallen to someone else, and, so, and someone's just going to have to come out and do something great in boxing. That's all. Um, Network. You talk about, like, you first it was Howard Cosell, and then when you get back, because there was a 10-year hiatus where you had retired from the ring, and there was a 20-year gap between you losing the title to Muhammad Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle and you knocking out Michael Moore for the lineal championship, the heavyweight championship of the world. And something that blows my mind, George, is it's been 25 years since then. 25 years. Can you imagine that? I used to celebrate all so much. The Rumble in the Jungle, 45 years. Then someone said, oh, in a few weeks is going to be the winning back of the title, a 25 years. All these things happening like that. Now I need to do something else. Uh -huh. So I got to knock out George Foreman formula now. It'll knock you out. Take the pain away. I want to get to that in a second. <laughs> because bigger than the rumble in the jungle or Michael Moore as a piece of business may have been the George Foreman grill. <laughs> that was like... <laughs> Michael Moore boasted about that, too. What's he say? If he had knocked me out, it would have been a Michael Moore grill. <laughs> I don't think so, <laughs> somehow. But so now, you, so now you got this pain relief formula? Yeah, George Foreman uh, from real time, pain relief knockout formula. You put it on old pains, old aches, and it helps. It How long really does it take? Does. How long does it take? Uh, about rubbing it on a little bit, and you wait about 20 minutes, maybe less. And old pain, you get a little relief. And that's all you want is a little relief so we can go out there and hurt it again. <laughs> But I'm getting relief now, and I'm promoting that now. You can, Amazon, I just asked for George Foreman, not to grill this time, although they are there, but ask for the real-time pain relief from, is from that, George Foreman. Is that you had so much success with the grill? And I'm sure it's not the only thing you ever tried to put your name on, but what is the secret to selling something like the grill? Obviously, the pitch man is a huge thing. You were the heavyweight champ. Everyone loved George Foreman, the way you'd reinvented yourself. But was the, was the kind of quality of the grill itself it part of it? It worked. It worked. For the first time in the grill, it had a slant. Right. You could actually cook on both sides so it wouldn't take long. And it, the grease would slant away. So people would all of a sudden look out, my waistline is back, and I'm eating steak. That kind of thing. They and put a fish. waffle iron on a tilt, and I bought one. I thought, that's genius. <laughs> yeah, it works. And I, and it I cooks in half the time. <laughs> and, it's, and he's even good with veggies. Right. And now with this new formula uh, from Real Time Knockout, uh, George Foreman Knockout formula, it works. You're saying it works, and it that's why you believe works. it. Right. And, no, and no. you know what? I got 14 grandkids, three great grandkids, and when they come around me and they play, there have been times when they'd come around me and say, he smelled like grandpa. So this stuff does not smell. So they keep coming and playing with me. I like that. I, I'm in the middle of a George Foreman infomercial, and I love it. It's like a dream come <laughs> true. <It's> like, <laughs> uh, but get, that's get, true. It's true. Getting, getting back to boxing, are you following the recent heavyweight division? I like it. Yeah. And uh, with Ruiz and uh, AJ, of mm -hmm. course, Anthony Joshua, that just 
turn Eric Boxing upside down. Yeah. And this guy, uh, Ruiz, can really fight. He's always been able to fight. Yeah. I don't know yeah. why they took him on. Uh, Short notice. Such, yeah. I just don't understand that. But now, <clears throat> if Joshua gets to watch the Muhammad Ali, uh, Leon Spinks, number two, yeah. he can win it. Why pop, do you pop, think pop, pop, hold. Pop, 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 hold. Just keep hitting and holding. Mm -hmm. 12 rounds, he'll win a decision. Think he has and the stamina to do that? Uh, he's going to have to find the stamina because all you got to do is hold. <laughs> Just don't try to punch. What? He's, he's too tall. He's too far up in the air. And his chin is up, huh? yeah. yeah. And this guy is accustomed to fighting nothing but tall guy. His old amateur and professional career. He knows how to fight tall guys. AJ's a big, strong guy. Mm -hmm. And what's it like as a puncher when you – now, this didn't happen too often to you. But when you hit someone with a big shot, the way Ruiz went down – but then picked himself back up. What's that do to a puncher when he sees the guy get up from a big the, shot? Like you know, and I was telling my son today, you, boxing is about management. Management. The one time you got to fight is when you get a title shot. You got to fight then. That's nothing to protect you. The champion doesn't go away unless you beat him. And the contender that get in the ring with you, he comes to fight. So you get knocked down, you say, well, let me get up. And you don't wait for the referee to count. You get up and you fight. That's what it's like. And you did that against, like, Ron Lyle, for example. What a fight. But I mean, as a puncher yourself, because A.J. hit him with such a shot, to watch Andy Ruiz, like, rise from that must be disheartening for the puncher, right? But that, that's what happened when you get to be champ. People say, look, I've come here, and maybe I'll die, but I'm going to win. And that's what uh, contenders think like that. You, you're not going to just knock me down and say it's all over. Put your hand down. Here I come again. Did you have to learn that against Ali in the Rumble in the Jungle? Like, I always thought if the George Foreman from the Rumble in the Jungle had the brain of the George Foreman who fought Michael Moore, if that's the greatest only, fighter ever. If I only had a brain. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh, I was knocked down in Archie Moore, and Dick Sadler said, look, if you get knocked down, don't listen to the ref. Find us. I found them, and they said, hold it. Stay. They counted for you. Then you, they tell you to get up, and you get up. And I did it, and it was all over. I waited too long to get up by their instruction. The second time around, when I fought Ron Lyle, it's like, uh-uh, I'm not listening. I'm getting up. And he knocked me down again, but I kept getting up. What a you fight. must learn, if you get knocked down, count one up, get up off the floor. You, which is something that Tyson Fury did, I'm going to get to that in a second against Deontay Wilder, talking about talking to an American yeah. Olympian who could punch and became heavyweight champion. There's another guy around like that a little bit right now. Um, in fact, let's get to that. Deontay Wilder, it's six it. foot seven, checking in only about 217, George. He's lighter than you at six seven, but he can knock down the walls of a city with that right hand. It's like Bob Gibson all over. That was a great baseball pitcher. Yep. It, that, that's the reason they shaved off that mound, because he come off that thing, ooh, room. And he, if you, he didn't hit you, you were more afraid of him hitting you with that ball. He could pitch. Now, Wilder, he comes off the mound with that height, and that right hand comes in there. It's like a steaming locomotive. If you better duck. If you can't duck, you better not get in there. Tyson Fury, that's why I, I, my hat's off to him, to rise. From, not only did he beat Klitschko, but then to come back from all his I troubles out of the ring. I was shocked when shocked, he got right? up. When he got up yep. from that shot, I was shocked. I said, no way. So that tells you there's another kind of a creature out there. <laughs> this guy can really fight. They call him the Gypsy King. He's more than that. This George, guy's pulling guys tricks. Six, seven, six, nine, and they can fight. When you look at you guys like you and Muhammad Ali, who were giants back then, 6'3", 220, and now you're looking at guys who can fight. Maybe not quite like you guys, yeah. but they're so much bigger. But height does not make you a good fighter at all. Bigness does not. It's right here. This is what makes you a fighter. When you decide, I'm getting in the ring, and if it's Goliath himself, I'm going to get him. It doesn't matter. Size has nothing to do with it, as you saw with Ruiz and Joshua. Size got nothing to do with it. What? So when you look at this heavyweight division, well, first of all, let's talk about Deontay Wilder's power for a second. I looked at, when I was a kid, the two biggest punchers ever were you and Ernie Shavers. Uh -huh. The size has something to do with Like, Rocky Marciano could punch, but I would, you and Shavers at 220 and 210. And, 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 and then came Lennox Lewis, 
who maybe wasn't pound for pound the puncher, but he's 245 or something like that hit. and oh. could hit. And now these guys, like Deontay Wilder, when you think of the best punchers ever and you watch Wilder, what are you thinking? Where does he rank with, the, with that shot? He's got power. He's Did he got punch a, like a, you? And a New Yorker uh, showed him how to punch. Mark Breland. Mark Breland, that's right. We were trying to think of it. Mark Breland has taught him the power and the strategy of throwing a right hand. Reckless he is. And if you're in the way, you're going down. I've, I've seen a lot of power with Deontay Wilder, more power than anyone else in the heavyweight division. What about compared to guys like you, Ernie Shavers, Sonny Liston? Can he hit like that? Shavers could, nobody can hit like Ernie Shaver. He had a crunch punch, and he was real, like a welterweight, he'd yeah. come back. Quick. Wow. And if he happened to catch you, you were going to take a stroll down memory lane trying to remember what in the world am I doing here. And Ernie Schaefer was the best as far as executing the punch. Sonny Liston was the – he could have beat all of those guys we just mentioned. He could have beaten them all but that Muhammad Ali who played with him and talked with him so much. Nobody's prepared for that. Ali still the greatest heavyweight of all time? Or I you like he, Joe Lewis? No, Ali is the greatest man of all time that ever boxed. Joe Lewis, the greatest fighter of all time. What'd you love so much about Lewis? Oh, man, there was never a punch that he was off balance. Wop, 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 and he'd get you with one, he was going to hit you with four more. Nothing like him before, a sense. We're all just maybe 10 to, it's Joe Lewis and number 10. <laughs> what? Before I let you go, they're telling me we've been talking for 10 minutes already, but I'm, I'm geeking out about that. I got George Foreman here. I want to talk to you about boxing. Um, when you do, you pay attention to divisions other than the heavyweights right now? Oh yeah, Canelo. Mm -hmm. I love Canelo. That's about the best fighter period around right now. What do you he like so much about? Best. He whatever he's weak in, he comes back stronger. He gets better and better. Uh, other than Mayweather, I've never seen anyone to get better each three year, three year period. He's better. Working whatever on his week, game. He works on his game. Mm -hmm. No better said. Lomachenko, have you been watching Vasil Lomachenko at all? Yeah, they're really good, but they they don't develop like uh, Canelo like, has. Like Canelo. No. I want to get back to you for a second. Um, the foreman that fought Ali, 40-0, 37 knockouts, knocked out Kenny Norton in two rounds, who beat, who split two fights with Ali, knocked out Joe Frazier in two rounds, who split two fights with Ali. Undefeat, unbeatable, the guy's never going to lose. And then you have the Rumble in the Jungle. It's the 45th anniversary coming up. What did you learn in that fight that you took with you later in your career? Well, you've heard the term rope-a-dope. Of course. Meet the dope. <laughs> <laughs> I learned never be a dope again. Use your uh, head. Use your head. You got to think. Fighting is a thinking man's sport. You got to think. You must think all the time. Sure, you got power left and right, but you must Think. And I never forgot that. And then in your comeback, you had, we talked about the Ron Lyle fight, the Jimmy Young fight where you had a religious awakening. Yeah. You quit boxing, become a preacher. Go, go, still a preacher, Still too. a preacher. Go away for 10 years. I remember your comeback. I was a kid. I was in high school at the time. And you were talking about you just wanted to get a roof for the church. That's, That's why you started fighting. And then it got bigger and bigger. And eventually you get the title shot at Holyfield. And it, it, when you say you learn to think, don't be a dope, how did that influence your win against Michael Moore 20 years after the Rumble in the Jungle? Well, Michael Moore, he believed the hype as I had with Muhammad Ali. Nobody ever knocked him out. And I was going to knock him out in one, maybe three rounds at the most to show everybody I'm not going to hurt him. See, I knocked him out. I'm humane. Michael Moore chose before the fight, get the puncher's gloves, rear's gloves. I said, this guy really think he can all punch me. He really believed that. And played right into the hand of a, a real puncher from way back. One fight that never took place when you won the heavyweight title, it was, to this day, in the history of sports, I was, I've never been affected by something like that, like the impossibility of going from one of the greatest heavyweight, the greatest heavyweight era ever, to one of the greatest heavyweight eras ever, 20 years between you win back the title. Um, that was really uh, something that I'd, I've never experienced in boxing, right, S before or since. Now you're the heavyweight champion of the world. Mm -hmm. And there was a guy named Mike Tyson around at the time who um, people thought, well, Foreman did great, but you can't feed him to Mike Tyson. 
But what happened subsequently makes me think, I wonder what would have happened. Not if Foreman fought Tyson in his prime, but if they would have fought then. What would have happened if you would have fought Mike Tyson? I call him Mike Nightmare Tyson. That guy was a nightmare in the ring. I mean, really, if he missed you with his left, then missed you with his right, he'd bite you. <laughs> I didn't want to have anything to do with that you guy. You didn't want him? No, I didn't want him. Do you think he one, wanted you? No way. We were both. One was a f scared, and the other was glad of that. <laughs> I didn't want any part of Mike Tyson. So he was scared of you, and you were glad that he was scared Amen, of you? Amen, preacher. Why do you think he was scared of you? <laughs> I could really punch, and of course, I was an expert at punching downward. My manager would hold the bag, and he was down there. So I learned to really develop power from punches, guys who were down low. He was smart enough to understand that. As they got taller, my manager was not taller, so there was a deficiency there. But uh, Tyson was, um, was very smart. Custy Amata and Tyson were a smart team. You know, at the period. time, I looked at you and I thought, Foreman, obviously, 20 years later, you're a little slower than you used to be. And that took a little snap off your punches, I thought. I didn't think you were as devastating a puncher in your second go-round as your first go-round. And I thought Tyson's too fast for him. But then the way history played out, I look back and I go, Foreman had so much character in the ring at that point. I I'm not so sure that that Tyson speed would have been the difference. It may have been your character as a mature fighter at that point that would have been the difference there. Who do you think wins that fight? I'm not so sure about all that or what you see. <laughs> Me neither. I don't Mike know. Mike Tyson was a monster. a monster. He was a monster. Those are the kind of guys you see in a nightmare and you wonder, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. And you wake up and say, Whew, so glad that was a dream. I didn't want any, any part of Mike Tyson. No way. Even though he, your, your most devastating win may have been against Joe Frazier, who in certain ways was like Tyson, shorter, bobbing, weaving, coming in. Yeah. Still, I don't know Mike Tyson. <laughs> I really admired Mike Tyson. He was not only he wasn't that tall, that big, but he could hit you quick, he, real quick. And his footwork was outstanding as well. In his prime, there was nothing like him. If he had fought for another four years winning, I would have put him number two to Joe Lewis. When you have it re you reinvented yourself several times, unlike anyone I can think of in American sports history where you go from the brooding, angry, scary guy, right? Even though you were an Olympian who was waving the yeah. American flag, and, and, and you come back as the happy fat man, <laughs> right. also Easy. champion, and then you sell the grill, which a lot of kids probably, were, now they're not kids anymore, knew you for more than even boxing, so you understand reinventing yourself. Mike Tyson was maybe even a more extreme example of you, and while he hasn't had a success like the grill, he has reinvented himself post-prison post-career as a kind of media-friendly businessman who kind of philosophizes in public about stuff. What do you think about Mike now, where he is in his life? Oh, I love him. I love him because he's, he's strictly positive. Got nothing to say negative about anything. He's having fun with life, and that's what it's really about anyway. Have some fun. Get out and say, you know, what if I can make, uh, you can make a million. He tells you that, he means it. Mike Tyson is a great guy to look at, look at his life. What a book when he's ready to write his own book. I can't wait to read it. George, thanks a million for showing up today. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Don't forget the real-time pain relief. Real-time pain Knockout relief. Knockout formula and Amazon. It works. That's why you think it's uh, like the grill, because it works. It works. It doesn't smell. Your grandkids will still come around They'll you. jump on you and they say, he doesn't smell like a Immediate grandpa. relief? Immediate How relief. How am I doing? Can we do an infomercial? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.